Christina Applegate has been making us laugh for decades, but tragedy followed this star from an early age. Between tragic family deaths and recurring health issues, Applegate's rise to the top of Hollywood is even more amazing. Christina Applegate was born in Hollywood on November 25, 1971. Her mother, Nancy Pretty, is a singer and actor, while her father, Bob Applegate, worked as a producer at Dot Records. But her dad wasn't a big part of Christina's childhood, as her parents separated when she was only five months old. As she explained on an episode of Who Do You Think You Are, My dad and mother split up when I was so young. I didn't get to spend the kind of time with him that I think either he or I would have liked to have spent. I'm part of him and part of his personality. Pretty was only able to book occasional TV roles throughout the 70s, so it fell to her daughter to support the family as a child actor. As Christina recalled to Backstage in 2020, it was something that I was always doing because I had to, for survival. That was how we made our money. Me doing radio commercials or commercials or whatever. It's how we were fed. Her parents split wasn't the only significant divorce in Applegate's life. In 2001, she married fellow actor Jonathan Sheck after a few years of dating, but then in 2005, they announced their separation, with the divorce finalized in 2007. In 1978, when Christina Applegate was seven years old, her mother Nancy Pretty was diagnosed with breast cancer. To stop the spread of the disease, she elected to undergo a mastectomy, which is the complete surgical removal of breast tissue. She was declared cancer-free after the procedure, but then in 1986, her doctors detected cancer once again, this time in her abdomen. Pretty then spent the next two years undergoing chemotherapy and seven cancer removal surgeries. By 1988, she was fortunately free of cancer once again, but the threat of the disease would linger in the family. When a mother is diagnosed with breast cancer, the odds are increased that her daughters will also develop the disease in adulthood. So Applegate then spent the next couple of decades knowing that breast cancer could very well well be in her future. With that in mind, she came up with an early detection plan to screen for the disease early and often. As revealed on an episode of Who Do You Think You Are?, Christina Applegate's father Bob was primarily raised by his paternal grandmother. He knew very little about his biological mother, who died when he was a child. After Christina's sister located their father's birth certificate, she learned that her grandmother's name was Lavina Shaw. Her father remembered being told by his grandmother when he was about seven or eight that his mother had just died. She had apparently been discovered beaten to death outside a bar. The Applegates learned via court documents that Shaw had endured emotional and physical abuse from her husband, Bob's father Paul, and that she left him in 1941 while she was pregnant. They reconciled, but that only led to more abuse, and Shaw eventually filed for divorce. She moved in with another man, but then Paul successfully prosecuted her for adultery, and their son was placed in the custody of his grandmother. Shaw remarried and then died in March 1955 at the age of 33. According to her death certificate, the cause was pulmonary tuberculosis and cirrhosis of the liver caused by alcoholism. This Applegate family were just one of the darker ones, you know? In the spring of 2005, the musical Sweet Charity was gearing up for a Broadway revival with a series of performances in Chicago. Christina Applegate was set to make her major theatrical debut in the lead role of down-on-her-luck dancer Charity Hope Valentine. The show features plenty of choreography, but Applegate was up to the task. However, while dancing during one performance, she fractured a bone in her foot. She attempted to continue, but she was in too much pain and she eventually allowed an understudy to take over. Applegate recovered, but producers announced that they planned to cancel the Broadway run. However, she convinced organizers to proceed, and so Sweet Charity premiered on Broadway in May 2005. Applegate received a Tony nomination for Best Actress in a Musical, although she would never work on Broadway again. With her broken bone not fully healed, she wore medical-grade, foot-protecting shoes during performances, and that contributed to lasting damage. As she admitted to TheInsider.com, I actually can't dance anymore, and that is sad for me because I always wanted to go back, but I probably won't be able to. Shortly after separating from her husband Jonathan Sheck in 2005, Christina Applegate began a new relationship with Alaska-based fisherman and photographer Lee Grivis. But he struggled with drug and alcohol addiction, leading Applegate to break things off. An attempt at sobriety led to a reconnection, but when he relapsed, they split up once again, which led to a bit of a pattern. 
As reported by the National Enquirer, she loved him but couldn't stand by and watch him ruin his life. Applegate and Grivas reunited for the last time in April 2008 and then broke up again later that year, before he was discovered dead in his Hollywood home in July from an apparent overdose. He was just 26. As Applegate said in a statement to US Weekly, Lee was an incredible human being who was an extremely important and beautiful part of my life. He is missed beyond words. Christina Applegate met musician Martin Lenoble in the mid-1990s, around the time that he was playing bass in the alternative rock band Porno for Pyros. They remained friends in the years to come, and things eventually became romantic in 2008. They got engaged on Valentine's Day 2010, got married in 2013, and had a daughter named Sadie in between in 2011. She's like super cool, like kid too. They've remained together since then, but they've also had to endure some darker moments. In September 2012, a person threatened Lenoble on social media by writing, You stole Christina Applegate away from me. If not for you, she would be mine. I will not accept this. I am going to kill you. This individual made even more disturbing claims by adding, I'm going to bust your head in for taking her away from me. And, You think this is a joke? I want to see how funny you think I am when I blow your fucking head off. Lenoble and Applegate contacted the Los Angeles Police Department, but no arrests were made as they failed to identify the harasser. Christina Applegate has dealt with more than her fair share of health struggles. For example, she's had a serious case of insomnia for more than two decades. As she revealed to People magazine in 2020, it affects your spiritual self, emotional self, and physical self. In my 20s and 30s, I used to never be able to fall asleep and would just stay up all night long. And that's far from the scariest health scare that Applegate has ever faced, as a checkup in 2008 revealed a rather concerning development. An inconsistency in an MRI scan prompted her doctor to order a biopsy. As it turned out, it was malignant and the diagnosis was breast cancer. Applegate was 36 years old at the time, two years younger than her mother was when she was first diagnosed with the same disease. As Applegate admitted to Women's Health, Even though it ran in my family, I never in a million years thought it would happen to me. I was scared shitless. Applegate then had herself tested to check for a mutation on the BRCA gene. A positive result indicates a 40-85% to greater chance of developing breast cancer and an increased likelihood of recurrence after periods of remission. It turned out that Applegate has the mutation, and so, to aggressively stave off the possibility that the cancer would come back, she decided to have a double mastectomy. So you just made the decision that you were going to let both go? Yep, I was just going to let them go. Coping with a cancer diagnosis is plenty stressful in and of itself, but Christina Applegate also had to deal with being a public figure on top of that. Her diagnosis was actually revealed to the public without her knowledge or approval. After her double mastectomy, she didn't really have much time to properly process everything that she was going through. She admitted to More magazine that she suffered what she called a total emotional collapse. As she explained, the good thing is that we got the information out, but talking about the facts of the disease, I didn't have to see what was going on with me. I think when it slowed down, all that came crashing down. I was just shaking. And then also immediately, I had to go into take care of business mode, which included a change to a more healthy diet. Because she tested positive for a mutation of the BRCA gene. Applegate was also genetically more at risk of developing ovarian cancer. A cousin of hers died from that disease in 2008, and in 2017, she chose to have surgery to remove her ovaries and fallopian tubes, as she admitted to today that year. That's how I've taken control of everything. It's a relief. That's one other thing off the table. Now let's hope I don't get hit by a bus. Around the time that she was turning 50, Christina Applegate began to experience a vibrating sensation in her arms and legs, as well as a lack of feeling in the same body parts. The symptoms became alarmingly worse over time. As she explained to Variety, my toes got numb and I ignored it. The balls of my foot got numb and I ignored it. All of a sudden, I'd be like falling over. People were like, oh, it's just neuropathy. Applegate then found herself unable to walk moderate distances on the set of her Netflix show Dead to Me. She was also sleeping a lot more, inexplicably gaining weight, and losing her balance. In the summer of 2021, she was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. MS is a degenerative neurological condition in which the body fights itself. 
Furthermore, a breakdown in the brain's ability to send signals to the body takes away the capacity for mobility, vision, balance, strength, and speech. Production halted for five months on the third season of Dead to Me so that Applegate could receive medical care. The effects of MS can be slowed down or diminished, but there's currently no cure. As Applegate explained to the New York Times in 2022, there is no better, but it was good for me. I needed to process my loss of my life, my loss of that part of me, so I needed that time. My humor shield keeps me okay, um, but of course, down on the insides, you feel the things. While receiving treatment for her multiple sclerosis, Applegate was forced to reckon with her new limitations. As she revealed to Variety, it takes time to kind of figure out this disease and figure out what's bringing on symptoms. I'm just a newbie to all of this, so I'm trying to figure it out, and I'm also in mourning for the person that I was. Applegate was still able to walk, but at a slower pace than before, and only with the assistance of a cane. She had to advocate for herself while shooting dead to me, as working long hours in the California heat proved to be exhausting. She required a wheel wheelchair on set, and a crew member held her upright for some scenes. Additionally, sequences were rewritten to allow her to be able to support herself against doors. Some filming days were scrapped entirely if she didn't have the strength to leave her home. In 2023, Applegate hinted that with shooting complete on Dead to Me, she would likely retire from live action gigs. As she admitted to Vanity Fair, I can't even imagine going to set right now. This is a progressive disease. I don't know if I'm going to get worse. I can do voiceover stuff because I have to support my family and keep my brain working. 